Well, there's not a lot of color in the landscape these days, thanks to the harsh winter, but why not try jazzing up the front entrance of your home with a seasonal patio pot? Now there's several things that you need and it's a lot of fun to get involved with this and make it really applicable to the holidays too. But obviously the first thing you need is a container or a pot. And really the bigger pots as far as a diameter is more useful because you can get more things in it when you're decorating it up. Now we just like to use our own black plastic pots that we've used or purchased woody ornamental landscape plants in. If you don't have any this size, you can get some usually from your retail garden centers because they usually will have a surplus. But this is what we use and then we can decorate that up too. But other things like uh, terracotta clay pots, there's all kinds of pottery that you can use. Sometimes though, going during the winter time with the clay pots, the freezing thawing, you may get some cracking in those pots. So you have to be careful. That's why we use plastic. But before you ever reuse a pot, make sure you th that you clean them up. Now, Obviously with the terracotta pots, there's always a little bit of salt from the fertilizer on them. But anything, just clean them up soapy, warm water initially. And we like to use the loofah gourd sponges because it's real abrasive and we can get things off of it. And then we use a 10% Clorox solution to either spray on or wipe on to make sure we're sterilizing it so we don't have any insects or diseases that are going to be coming in and hurting the plants during the growing time. So your pots are very important, size is also very important as far as matching up with your plants. Well the next thing on your pots, if you get one without drainage holes, it's very important to have some kind of drainage. Now the particular one we're using has some big holes in it, but if you get pots without drainage holes, try to use something in the bottom as an aggregate to allow drainage. Again, keep your broken clay pots and sprinkle those in maybe an inch or two deep that will help allow drainage, gravel, anything like that in the bottom. Now sand, be careful because it's going to make it heavier and once the moisture saturates the sand, it actually holds it longer too. So something that's a little bit more porous. Now in our case, again with the holes, our problem is to keep the soil from going out of it. So we tear off pieces of our floating row cover, a remay that we use to cover our vegetable crops during the summer, the last two or three years, but then you'll start getting frayed pieces. Well, we'll use those to actually place in the bottom of the pot to cover that hole up to keep the soil from actually falling out initially when we're potting. So that's a real good thing to recycle. Now the thing that I like to do personally though is just use leaves and they're pretty easy to find this time of year and just put the leaves up against the holes in the pot, place those around. This one has about six holes and those will keep the soil from coming out, not to mention they'll deteriorate real quickly and so you'll get drainage in the long run which you need and also they break down quickly and initially even they're going to allow some moisture through. Now if you're doing this during the growing season you can still use green leaves as well. So that's what I like to use, easy to come by. Once we have our holes covered up so our soil doesn't come out, we'll be putting in some of our potting soil. Now what we're going to use is just a peat mix that's very dry and powdery, you can see. And you have to be careful with that because it, you need to make sure you get the moisture in there. It has a little bit of perlite in it to allow for better drainage. Now some of the mixes are also going to have bark mix in it to allow drainage too, but just something that's good sterilized and will allow lots of drainage. Now once I get a little bit in, I like to tap it down some to make sure that I get it compacted before I start planting. Now obviously with the big pots like this, it's going to take quite a bit of potting soil, but we don't want to fill it to the top because we need to allow a little bit of room for our design and planting our plants. And I think that's going to be about all I'm going to put in to start with. So again, a good drain, well-drained potting soil. Now when working with peat moss, it's not uncommon to find chunks in it, so you want to break those apart and it would be a good idea to wet it down a little bit ahead of time so you don't inhale or breathe some of the stuff. Again, we're just going to kind of tap it down and now we're ready to put our plants in. Now there's a wide selection of cool season annuals that work nicely in these kinds of season patio pots. Of course, we're familiar with pansies or violas, but you can also use calendulas, snapdragons, and then we have their ornamental flowering cabbage or kale, dusty miller, or dianthus. So there's a wide selection of things with lots of color and you just need to kind of match it up with your appropriate season. Now we don't think of using some of the other things that I have here though, like woody ornamentals that are in containers. 
Mugo pine is a nice one, the dwarf mugo pine. Nandinas, and there's all kinds of shapes and textures of foliage with berries on nandinas. And ornamental grasses work real nicely because even though they're gonna go dormant during the winter, they still have their seed plumes and the color really adds to a lot of the seasonal decorations. Now some other favorite woody ornamental selections would be dwarf Alberta spruce, yew, boxwood, yopon holly, Burford holly, and you can use a lot of things that are gonna have berries on them too, like some of the deciduous hollies. But when using these, these are usually gonna be my focal point or my bigger plant. I'm actually gonna leave them in the container and we don't wanna put them right in the very center, we kinda wanna offset them. And I'm gonna leave it in the container because this is something I may use again in the landscape permanently and we'll pack that down in there nicely. Now we can start adding a little bit more soil once we know where we're gonna put it. Now remember, you don't wanna put anything like this right in the center. It's good to make it off-sided or put it in the back where you can put your smaller things in the front and kind of offset it with an artistry type of an eye. Now you'll notice right off the bat too, I don't have a lot of height on this particular container as far as plant material when you look at the size of the pot, but that's actually gonna be another pot in combination with one that I have taller plants behind it. So we're probably gonna put three pots maybe on one side of the door and two on the other, but this will be in the front because it'll have smaller pot, potted plants in it. Now we're gonna use a Thanksgiving theme, so we're gonna pop in here some uh, yellow-like pansies that'll work real nicely, and we have two packs. And that'll give us a little bit of color with our ornamental grass. And again, when you're potting things up, you never want to pack the soil all the way to the rim. You need to leave a little bit of room where you can have some water and uh, water standing when you're putting the water in. And we're going to pack them down. Now you see I don't have quite enough soil to start with, so I'm moving it all on one side. And we'll add another little bit of a colored pansy that will fit in nicely with our overall color pattern. Now if you get any potted plants like this that are annuals that the roots are really root bound, be sure and break those apart where they uh, won't be root bound and grow round and round. And then you can uh, get a little better coverage with those to start with. A little bit more soil. And again, think of your theme. Now the next thing that we're gonna put in is a lot of dried things that we've been able to get from the landscape. Now, it's gonna be easy for you to find uh, things like dried roses, probably from the freezing, if, if you didn't get them harvested in time. You can use things like sunflowers, dried sunflowers. If you don't have these things in your landscape, they're real easy to purchase this time of year. Also, look for berries again that are on the different types of ornamentals and things out in your landscape. Now, obviously with the Thanksgiving theme, we're gonna stick a little bit of uh, turkey in there. And a lot of these particular drives you can just set in there with an arrangement like this and it'll work pretty nicely. Now with the sunflowers, we can angle them in a little bit more behind the turkey to give us some more height. And the nice thing about the uh, drives like this too, they're not going to uh, require as much watering. They'll take the freeze a little bit more too. And then you can use various types of uh, gourds, miniature pumpkins, all kinds of things to jazz it up. But that would really look nice in front of a home when you're gonna have a lot of company and stuff. Now one thing with a pot like this, how are you gonna keep it protected from the winter? Well, obviously some of those things can freeze. The main thing you wanna do is try to keep the root system from freezing and just in your display, if you don't like the color of pots, you can fix the two by six frames that we use often on our decks where the pot will just set down in there and there's a little bit of space that you can put compost and insulate it. But another way is to actually set your planted pot inside a bigger one, again filled with styrofoam or compost or mulch, that helps insulate it. But keep them watered, you don't water them as often or fertilize them as often as you would. And then if it gets really cold, you may need to put them on a dolly and take them inside or cover them with a, a blanket or something with plastic to really keep them from freezing. But you'd be surprised how much use you can get out of these throughout the entire winter time by just a little bit of protection up under the eaves in your front porch. And if you've got a lot of traffic coming your way this holidays, why don't you give your hand a try at putting in some seasonal patio pots?